This video is recorded to help my students to understand how to use Python to write ML functions. After students understand these examples, the students should be able to do project two. Again, we will use text editor to write down our code. Now, all the commands placed in parentheses, star, and star parentheses. So we have three functions. Uh, three description of those functions. So let's say the first function, we want to define a function named greater. This function type is integer by integer list to integer list. So that greater EL is a list of all integers in L that are greater than E. So E is an integer, L is an integer list. Okay, so when we write this function, we still use recursive sync, but this time we consider the pattern. So we have two patterns. First pattern is uh, greater. So we give an energy, but if my list is empty, then of course the result will be empty because no element is greater than E. Or second pattern is if you give me a list, I write down this list since it's not empty, so I can write down the list in the head and the tail form. So X is the head x as is the tail. So in this case, uh, we use recursive sync. If the head is greater than e, that means head will be in the result. Then the result will be head column column. Then I call the function greater for the e under the tail. Equivalent say after I find all the elements in the tail that are greater than e, combine the head we get the result since head is greater than e. Else, then we will have just a call the function for e to the tail. Okay, so let us save it, then test our uh, code. Again, I will navigate, uh, open the terminal window, navigate to the folder where I save this uh, uh, file. So I will use cd documents. I say we the documents videos CSCI 461. If I list all the element uh, files there, we say we have example two. So I will type SML and I use example two dot SML. Then we will say the function is there. Now I tested this function, I type of grade example three. Two, five, one, six, four, seven, and zero. Now, below the result will be a list with all the integers that are in this list and the greater than three. So it will give me five, six, four, seven. Okay, so the function is correct. <clears throat> when we write this function, notice we have a trick. We use x, kernel kernel x s to represent a list. So x is a head, x s is a tail. Of course, if you don't want to write it in this way, you can just use arrow to represent a list. So your function could be like this. Uh, greater one is another version. If you give a pattern, give me an empty list, the result is empty. And or, if you give me a not empty list, then what I will do. So then I will say if x uh, head of the list, if head of the list is greater than e, then the head of the list will be in the result. And uh, count, on, count on the result if you act on the tail of the list. So I will say tail of the list. Uh, of course, tail of the list may be I put it inside princess to make sure it's okay. Else, greater one, I'll leave the one here, this function, then e, then I need to have tail of the list. Okay, so let's uh, save it and try it again. Use Example two dot SML 
So you say greater one also work. Okay. Now let us use the same uh, thing that test greater one. Let me copy the same thing here. You're supposed to get the same result, right? So type in the oh, we have a uh, arrow. Say please look greater one. Oh, I type greater one one. Sorry, C A E T R greater one. Okay, paste. Yeah, get the same result. So this is the first function. <coughs> Notice we use the pattern. So the uh, pattern for the argument list. So the argument is the integer and the list. So at least I have two patterns. One is list is empty, another list is not empty. So he will try to match the first pattern first. If cannot match the first pattern, he will try to match the second pattern. Okay? Now that's the second example. We want to write an example to test whether an element is a member of a set. Of course, we will use a list to represent a set. So again, we will use uh, this function will return you true or false. So we still divide in the pattern. The first pattern is you give me an element then the list is empty. <coughs> then I ask if E is a member of this empty list. Of course it's not since the list is empty. So that will return you false. And uh, is member, now the list is not empty. So I will say E have head under the tail of the list. Now how do we know it is a member? Of course, if E happen equal X, then E is a member of the list, right? That's true. Else, we know if E not equal X, then you just need to check if E is a member of his tail. tail. As x, uh, x s. So I will say this will <coughs> is a member. Okay, is a member. So this will equal uh, if x equal e, then the result is true. Else the result will be is a member. I have the same. Oh no. Is member x a e and xs. Okay, so two pattern. One is list is empty. Second one list is not empty, and I still use recursive sync for the second one. If head of the list match e, that means e is a member. So result is true. Else has nothing to do with head. We just need to check if e is a member of the tail. Okay, now next. We can uh, write a function to construct the intersection of two sets. Intersection of two sets, equivalent, uh, we use list to represent a set, so intersection of two lists. That means the common elements in two lists. Again, uh, now the argument are two lists, so we will uh, uh, determine the pattern. The first pattern is uh, you give me a list, and the second list is empty. Now, if the second list is empty, so the intersection, which are the common elements, are empty because there's no nothing in common, right? Now, if the second one is not empty, then I always can write it as x, x s case. Okay. Now, in this case, we will say if x is also a member of error, then x will be in the result. If x is not a member of L, then x will not be in the result. So we will say if e is a member x in L, then x will be in the result. So you just x kernel kernel the result of intersection for this L and the tail of the second list. Basically, I find the intersection of L and the tail of the list combine head of the list x because x is also a member in L. Okay? So else has nothing to do x. So the result is just intersection of L and the tail. So you can see all those functions we write them use recursive sync. The idea is very clear. How can I find the common elements in this two list? I first check the head. If the head of second list is also in the first list which means is a member of first list. 
then the result is the head combined with the result of common elements of error with the tail of the second list. Else has nothing to do with head of the second list, then we just result is the intersection of error and the tail of the second list. Okay? Now let us save this, then we try to run it with compile. Okay, we got everything right. Now first let us check is member. So is member, for example, I have three, then I have at least one, two, four, five. We know this is supposed to return us false. Yes. Now we do the same thing. Is member, this time I want to check one. Uh, is this in the list? Four, two, one, six, five. This is supposed to return us true. Yeah, we're right. Now let us try test intersection. Intersection, suppose the first list is four, one, three, six. The second list is uh, one, six, two, four. Now we know the intersection will be one, four, six, right? So one, six, four. Yeah, one, four. Since it's set, we don't consider the order. Okay. If you have any questions, please send me email.